beautiful friends, now it's the real welcome. We have to start with music <laughs> because it is really the mother moving through us. You know, I probably there are many different teachings of Divine Mother and the way that she moves through us here is in her Taoist really form, the Tao, the rainbow light. And she is the intelligence in all life. It's pretty amazing. So I had this amazing encounter with a Bulgarian clairvoyant witch who is actually apparently, you know, honored by many shamans of this world. She's a young girl and she just sees everything and absolutely sees into the earth, sees into cosmos. Um, she lives in Czechoslovakia. And so I spoke to her twice and uh, she has to see you physically and i want to find out how good her english is because i spoke czech to her uh, but she just looked at me and she said oh my gosh the rainbow of mother nature cosmic mother is just all around and i thought that's amazing when we get the confirmation from someone who can see you know besides our own seeing of course so it's pretty amazing so i know for sure <laughs> this is the Tao moving through us and yes, Patricia sent the email. I haven't read it yet, but please do share in the chat if you want some highlights from what Patricia says. Um, so I know the mother is moving through this world. She really is. And maybe, you know, um, she comes to some people in a certain form and then that is their truth, of course. But the one that flows through here is the really rainbow mother. And that is so amazing. So today we will actually be working with the rainbow light, which is the light that we see when we connect to our soul, when we connect to spirit. And once again, Yogananda, he loved rainbow light. And uh, his favorite stone was opal because it contains the rainbow light of the ethers. And so, yes, uh, Patricia is our great guide. We'll definitely do whatever we need to do when we need to do it with Patricia. And so, ah, what is it we're going to do today? Today, we just, I call it an initiation because this divine mother, she is embodied in the earth. She is visible within the earth as really the flow the rainbow light too. She likes to run in rivers. <laughs> I mean, rivers like energy rivers, but also real rivers. She loves when the air is pure. She loves when the waters are pure. She loves when the soil is pure. She loves when our bodies are pure. And you know why? Because she wants to be in her fullness. The fullness can only be expressed when nature is healthy. Now, I had one encounter with our divine source where I was just perceiving divine source as pure health. It was the strangest encounter I had with source. And maybe that's not true at all, but it was really amazing. And I think about it every day, you know, being in a physical body, like even when we are healthy, it is not the fullness of the health we actually experience when we are with source. Because even though we might be eating healthy, doing all the great things, we still live in a toxic world. And, you know, for example, you know, municipal water, ooh, you know, how far remote is it from the pure, pure, pure spring water and which spring is still clean? I don't know. And so when Cosmic Mother Nature designed this world, of course, her idea was that if we have pure organic nature that humans will be honoring really worshiping, worshiping the sources around us, then we will constantly, we will have to be constantly connected to divinity. Because there is no way we can disconnect if we are in nature, one with nature, part of nature. And it doesn't mean primitive living. Ooh, okay, divine matrix, wonderful. <laughs> yes. That's really great. I can't wait to read it. So you think with me, we are magicians, we are alchemists. We are remembering to use the mind like a creator. That means we visualize and we imagine, visualize and imagine. And at the same time, we use the mind like a magic wand, focus and use our will, the will, is important that's when we point the magic wand at something and say and so it is that is the will we will something into being and so let's imagine 
and visualize both. <laughs> we'll start with a little practice because today we will be receiving the initiation of this higher mind so that we can a little bit get rid of the lower mind, which usually is full of disturbance, nonsense, and randomness. We don't want to be in random disturbance <laughs> at all. That's not how we want to use the mind. But yes, we have to accept that our brain is not designed really well at the moment because we are so disconnected. It actually happened when the fall happened, we disconnected also our nervous system from the pure original design and so on and so on. So there is a lot to be said <laughs> about the mind, but let us put our hands together, right and left. That reconnects the flow of life force, like rivers connecting into one within the body. That's why we call it the prayer position, but it has nothing to do with praying, really. It should not. It's really how we reconnect right and left. We want all these acupuncture points and the meridians to be touching. And we do connect at the heart, you know? And this is really something to do with how energy flows, mother, father, God within us. Mm -hmm. So let us connect. The portal of the heart is such an important point that we often speak about. It is the portal for the divine forces and sources to come through us. And when the heart is open, we smile. And so let us smile. Smile and hold right and left together, connecting this magnificent flow of energy. We are rebalancing our brain when we do that, as you can imagine. The left and right hemisphere need to be rebalanced in a human being. That's why people do yoga. That's why people do all these different practices. We are reconnecting right and left within us. We are creating oneness within us. And let us look at the Big Dipper once again, the seven lords of seven rays, seven divine wills. And when you look at the beautiful constellation and now close your eyes and now let us visualize we recreate what already exists within the mind's eye. We recreate it. And so we can walk from the first to the second, from second to third, from third to fourth pool of light. And then we hop onto the handle of the ladle, the fifth will that we will be working with today and the sixth and the seventh. And so we visualize it in our mind's eye and we hold the visual and ideally, we see it in our third eye. The third eye is like the canvas or the screen upon which the divine speaks with us. So that's why when we open our third eye, it's like seeing a movie unfolding. It's not imagination then, but this time we still visualize. We visualize until the third eye fully opens. Yes, and that's it. And now maybe you feel some buzzing in your hands because the energy, the electricity, all the flow, your magnetism, we are connecting. The hands are so important. That's why we practice different mudras as well. So the position of the hands. <clears throat> so I experienced when humans got disconnected within the nervous system. So what we have today is the nervous system is the diminished nervous system. And it takes a lot of practice, a lot of meditation to actually reconnect what needs to be reconnected. And so many of these meditations we do with Orin, they are actually transmissions of light and energy into the nervous system so that we can be upgraded. When we upgrade the nervous system and reconnect the right and left hemisphere so they, they work as one, we perceive different reality. It's pretty incredible. And then we are always connected to higher realms, to the higher mind. The small mind, this is, this is exactly how the small mind works. It looks at reality and it says, my day is like this. It already is scheduled, really, it's given. This is how my day unfolds. This is what my bank account looks like. This is how I live. And if I have dreams, probably they are impossible. And then I have to think about the past and I have to worry about the future. So we all know what that looks like. You know, It's very much typical for the human mind. But today we will release this human mind and we will actually go into our divine mind, the higher mind. The higher mind doesn't look at the day as something that is given. The higher mind acknowledges the day as it is, saying this is the result of my past. Not only of my past, but also the collective past of humanity. Everything that you see on the outside is created by the past, thinking, feeling, saying, doing. 
But as magicians and alchemists, we step into the higher mind and the higher mind sees it. Yes, it is here. But the higher mind says, what do I want? What do I really want? <laughs> what do I desire? What would I like? And then I'd re I recommend actually speaking it into the ether every single day, unaffected by what is on the outside, even though it does exist. Divine Mother taught me, and I know I taught this before, so I'm not going to go into the detail of it, but Divine Mother taught me, yes, you see it. Yes, it, it is suffering out here. It actually is for so many, right? Animals, people, all of it, the earth, the suffering is real here. And Divine Mother says, you see it, and then you don't run away from it. No, no, no. But you, as a magician, must give rise to something else. And so she said, from the heart, not from the mind, not from fear, not from hatred, not from dislike, because that would actually not work. It would not work. We have to go into the depth of the heart. And the depth of the heart gives rise to the new reality. She told me we cannot create only through the mind. We must engage the heart. And it is the mind that then is engaged by the heart. So it's actually like a reversed process. So when you see suffering in this world, do not run away from it. I know a lot of people want to run away from it when they see it. And that's really, you know, we didn't come here to hide. We came here to stand up. We didn't come here to, you know, say, oh, this is going to lower my frequency. No, no, no. It's lowering the frequency of the world we live in if people are suffering. So we come here as the miracle makers. And Divine Mother trained us to do this. And many of us receive these spiritual experiences with her, where we are in deep creative process from the heart with her while facing suffering, which is the hardest thing to do, of course, especially if the suffering is yours and when it hurts you or your loved ones, it becomes super real. And so the key is to go into the heart and feel the depth of your amazing, loving, caring heart. And from that depth, give rise to a desire. The desire that is not sensual. It is definitely not sensual. <laughs> uh, those are fun too, but we wanna give rise to our heart's desire. And then that desire is the one that shoots up from the heart and it goes up to your higher mind, not the human mind. The human mind would probably say, oh, you can't do this. Oh, it's not possible. And I don't think this can happen. But we want to go to the higher mind that is unlimited. The higher mind is the mind of God. It is the mind of your divine self who does not see any limitations, absolutely no limitations. It's only the human mind that can be limited or limiting. And so what is it in your heart right now? Let's listen deeply to the heart. Let's attune to your heart right now and give rise to a desire. Maybe it already is within your heart and then shoot it up as energy to your higher mind. Okay, let's do it. Deep breath into the heart. Really connect with your smile. When you are in your heart, you smile. <sighs> Deep breath. And then give rise to a desire of the heart. My heart, I hear you. My heart, I feel you. What is it you would like to bring into this world today? And then once you have it as energy, because the heart gives birth to energy, then Elevated up, lifted up beyond the brain, beyond the human mind, into the higher realm of your divine mind. And your divine mind says, yes, this is a good one. I want that too for you. Let's bring it into this world. And it can be something completely collective, not even for yourself. And every day, this is how the magicians of the new earth exist always in higher heart higher mind and the world is still out here 
sometimes it's instantaneous manifestation. Absolutely. Sometimes we instantaneously create. It really depends. It depends on how attuned we are. It depends on how the elements operate through us. It is the five elements who bring everything into form. And they have to give their body to the form. So it's pretty amazing. And so, um, and so it is. This is how it's done. So today we will be working with the fifth Lord of the Big Dipper who will be initiating us into this higher mind, no more small mind. And throughout the day, you know, it's, it's, it's a new process to be a divine being on planet Earth. Yes, this life still happens. This, this is the life of the small L, as Divine Mother calls it. The little stories we have here happening. But honestly, when you purify yourself, when you come to a place where you end all karma, all patterns, then all is very instantaneous because there is no resistance from anything and anyone within yourself and around you. And so purification is the process Yogananda taught us. Once again, it takes a few minutes every day to purify by the living fire of God and then add some light to yourself, do some meditation, do some breathing. And of course, as always, we must connect to the earth and we must connect to cosmos. Very beautiful. So that's to me the fastest process, you know, Yogananda taught us. And it is so possible right now because everything is so fast. And so also today we will be working with the, you know, again, our central spiritual sun and with a solar archangel who will be transmitting light to us, solar light from divine source. So pretty amazing. I'm excited. So let's go in. So this was a really magnificent transformation of our mind to be in higher mind. And again, you saw how we work with our soul, how we then go into the heart and we take the energy from the heart. We go up, we transform the brain. So many years ago when I was meditating, mm, uh, I asked the divine and I really at that point didn't have a direct encounter with source. I didn't have a direct encounter with divine mother. So <clears throat> I was working with a lot of master beings, but this was even before Yogananda. And I was meditating and I really wanted to have a breakthrough. I was really begging for a breakthrough guidance. And then suddenly the OM appeared in my third eye and it was beaming at me information and it was speaking to me in human language. And it said, use your non-dominant hand. So I was very disappointed and I didn't realize how huge that guidance actually was so that day i started to use my left hand and so what will that do to you it will rewire your brain using if you are right-handed your left hand using both hands equally is so important for the rebalancing of our brain and again the brain needs to be reconnected because it got disconnected when the fall happened on planet earth and so use your left hand I recommend doing a few things always with your left hand. And that is, for example, when you drink water and you are holding the glass always with your left hand. And when you are eating, and for example, you are able to use just a fork or a spoon, only use your left hand. Those are so easy. And then you will never go back. It just rewires the brain. And so then, you know, how many times a day do you drink, you know, <laughs> water or whatever you drink, tea, and then you use your left hand. And then how many times a day do you eat where you use a spoon or a fork and you always use your left hand? That is great amount of left hand. So this really helps with our rewiring of the brain. We need to rewire the brain. And this is what we did today with this amazing trans. It was a transmission of just miraculous energy. Another recommendation that I have is when we work with these beings and you have your eyes closed, ask them deeply to show themselves to you. And very often they will show just an orb of light, but it's good to see the orb of light in practice because you want to see <laughs> and an orb is always an expression of a being of light because they go beyond the form and they go into being a star. That's why we wouldn't see an orb. And so when we work with the solar angel, for example, say, you know, you want to see the solar angel. And then 
insist i insist until they appear <laughs> and so uh, you have to see a golden orb then right so that's one of the things and the last thing is we are working with something very sacred within cosmos and that is magnetism Magn magnetism is actually divine love and so we are magnetizing with these star beings we are magnetizing our own light with their light and we are being magnetically pulled towards evolution. We are being pulled by the sun. We are being pulled by the stars. And you know how amazing it is? I was thinking about it. Maybe 500 of us, sometimes 600 of us meditate every day. That's incredible. Imagine that's a huge amount of light attuning to the divine will. How exciting is this? This is transformational. That's amazing. How many people, you know, people go to church. A lot of people go to church. But I don't really, I don't know. I've been to church. I looked at it. I wanted to experience it. And I left, for example, because, you know, you want to have really true divine experience with source, with divine source, with divine mother. And you want to really go through these amazing, amazing transformations within your being so that you can actually really experience what the divine is. And, you know, not some books that maybe didn't tell the truth anyway. And so we are magnetizing, magnetizing. The five, 600 of us here are magnetizing and we bringing divine will to earth. This is so futuristic, you know, it's amazing. And so magnetism, think of magnetism as divine love that pulls you higher and higher and higher because love is an evolutionary force. Fear is the devolution. And so that's why we go, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Whatever that means to you, you are a child of divine source. You are a child of divine mother. And she is guiding us to divine source. When we had the first explosion of consciousness within cosmos, the first being to come out of source was really divine mother. And Divine Mother is the one who is the outbreath. She is the creation, actually. She is the one who creates with her own body. That's why the Deva. And so she is ultimate love, pulling us back to Divine Source. It's okay to be in the world of matter, but we spiritualize matter and be free from matter. This is what we are doing here. This is amazing. We are really fulfilling the divine purpose of a divine being embodied here on planet Earth. We spiritualize matter. We are free. We go being pulled. We surrender. We surrender to the pull. The pull is strong. And so these stars are now pulling us. The sun is pulling us. And yesterday, I... You know, we were talking about all the different suns that we have and how all the sun, suns will be evolving into more of a greater sun and the earth will be evolving into a solar world as well. This is important. That's why you and me are becoming solar Christed beings, because the solar light is really the Christ light. And the thing is that I know when Atlantis ended, it was really, you know, heartbreaking for us not only for humans, but also for the beings who came here from other dimensions to assist. And they embodied here in their own bodies, actually, not in human bodies, but they embodied here. And, you know, it was a failure because evolution couldn't take place. It was a devolution. But we made that promise. I, I heard it. I was there. I actually said it to source. And I said, this time, the earth will not suffer again. And I thought about it, is it, you know, so many people talk about how, you know, all this will actually be pretty dramatic with volcanoes exploding and tsunamis and big earth changes and so on and so on. But yesterday, I just had a feeling it was not guidance. It, I, it was nothing that was given to me as information, but it was just a feeling. If we are to succeed this time, which we will, then when the solar flash comes, which it already has come through many, actually, we will download that light into our own beings, every single one of us who is prepared, and it will run through the body, it will run through the light body into the earth, and so it will not have to just run into the earth and cause disasters, it will actually run through you and me and everyone who prepared for this, and I believe that's true, I have to actually speak to source about this. Because it makes so much sense why so many of us already experience the solar flesh. 
I experienced it four times. It runs through your nervous system and runs through the crown to the base of the spine, into the earth, through the body. So, you know, and why do it so many times to us? <laughs> You know, so I think this is going to be the technology of this new transformation. So that's why we are preparing, because when it comes. So, for example, Sadhguru says this will come between the year 2024 and 2026. And Matthias De Stefano says exactly the same. And he says we need to be prepared. Sadhguru says we need to be prepared. And so we are preparing. And that's it. So thank you so much for being here. Tomorrow we only have one call in the morning, early for me in the morning. So 9 a.m. Pacific. I'll be traveling, but we will actually go back to second will, which this group did not get to experience um, unless you did it yourself or on the later call. But we will go back to that beautiful will, the will to unify. So thank you so much and maybe see you later today or tomorrow. It's on the website if you don't know when the times are and the Zoom is on the website as well. So thank you so much.